Hey, hey, Vinyl Community, Jeff here again, and yeah, you guessed it, it's time for another thread. Thread, thread, threads, they are all over the place, and I'm loving it because, again, it gives us a chance to look at our collection in a different way than just show and tell of, hey, look what I got that's new. So, I like this, it gives me a chance to dig in, it gives us a chance to tell stories, get to know each other a little better, and this one is about our early years, the formative years, the times where our musical uh, you know, musical journey was starting to formulate in us and that we were, you know, young and learning new things. And so what is what brought us to where we are today is kind of it. Now, of course, for old folks like me, it's been a long journey, lots of years, lots of things that uh, were brought into that. And I've told a lot of stories before. And if you've been a long time viewer of the channel, you probably know a lot of my early years already. But we're going to do it all real quick. And what I did... Because um, there's multiple ways I could really approach this. You could look at like the first few albums I got into and how it started. But I kind of picked kind of phases. It all is still the early years. But it's over about a six or seven year span that I think definitely set the precedence for where I ended up continuing in my music growth. And of course, you know, we span, we change. But um, anyway... Everyone knows where I started. Um, prior to even learning, and I've told this before too, prior to learning about hard rock or anything like that, my musical journey in my preteen years, I would say, preteen years, I listened to a lot of stuff was on the radio. Um, I listened to disco. I liked, you know, the Bee Gees and Andy Gibb and the Grease soundtrack and uh, Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. And because these were all big things on the radio, and I listened to a lot of that. So then in 1978, I discovered Kiss. First album I bought by them was Love Gun. Uh, and then because I had heard a song from Kiss Alive 2 at a friend's house, went out and bought Love Gun, and that started me down the path of hard rock. So first band that put me on the path would have been Kiss. He wanted to see our favorite album by the band rather than the first album that we got into by the band. So I'm going with Creatures of the Night. Now, I'm one of those no-nonsense. I don't get critical on Kiss. I don't get critical on their style changes. I couldn't pinpoint and say, I hate this album or this album stinks. I like every Kiss album for what it is. I never had a problem with the sound changes. I thought I'd Mass was an awesome album. I loved it as a kid. I love it to this day. I love Dynasty. I saw Dynasty was my first tour. 1979 was my first concert that I personally went to, outside from what my parents took me to as a kid. First concert I ever went to was Kiss Dynasty 1979 tour. Loved that album. I didn't look at it as we were young and naive. Music was music. Um, I didn't really look at changes, so I didn't see it as a big deal. So, love Dynasty, loved Unmasked, loved The Elder. Everything was just, it was just something new. Love Creatures of the Night, because it was like a heavy album. Heavy, heavy album. You know, and so, to this day, I, you know, I love something about every Kiss album. And I don't think I have any negative feelings about anything in their catalog. So, yeah, I'm one of those weird people. That's where it started. Now, for about uh, more than a year, probably closer to two years, it was only Kiss for me. And I still listened to some, some poppy stuff on the radio. And then I moved. My parents moved four or five blocks down the street, but it was put me in a new neighborhood. Across the street was a guy who listened to Kiss too. Made friends with him. He was two years my younger. Um, lived right across the street. And pretty much from then on, we were joined at the hip for the next five years before I ended up leaving for the military. He loved Kiss, but he also loved Van Halen. So he turned me on to Van Halen. Now, around the time that he turned me on to Van Halen, probably Women and Children First was probably the album. But this album, for some reason, is the one that still to this day is like just nostalgic purposes, probably still from top to bottom, one of my favorite albums. And again, I'm not one of those picky Van Halen people. I love Diver Down. I admit when 1984 came out and all the keyboards, I was a little turned off over time, grew to love it. But for some reason, this album resonates with me still 
as being just just a scorcher from top to bottom. This to me is the heyday for Van Halen. It's when our magazines were really popping. It's they, they had the image, they had the stage show, they had the look. I think I may have saw them on this tour. I know I saw them in 1984, but I'm pretty sure I could swear that we saw them before. I know I had a a uh, a t-shirt from this tour but you know you could have bought them back in the day at any state fair or anything i know i had a t-shirt from the 81 tour and i'm thinking we saw it but man that's just it's so hard to remember it's a blur but i thought the band looked the sharpest they had the coolest costumes at this point the costume the stage gear they just looked great kind of like with kiss to me 1977 is the look it's the year when all the best photos came out. I thought it was some of the best costumes up to that point. It was just everything about that year, the stage, the pictures, that whole era to me was is just like the high watermark in my mind. And this is kind of the same way. I love all Van Halen albums. Uh, I just, that one I gravitate towards the most. Now we move into the 80s. I don't know where it started, but I'm going to go Motley Crue because their first album in 1981, Too Fast for Love, I bought it probably within months of it coming out. We had no clue who it was on the East Coast. We saw people, bands like this mentioned in magazines. Um, and so I'm thinking that that might have been my first tip in our first toes into the water of what later came to be the hair metal movement. I'm not 100% sure. There may have been other bands, but I know Too Fast for Love was a, a major uh, point on our situation uh, as far as getting us into that. And then when Shot the Devil came out, it was a game changer. This album just top to bottom just was, a, and again, it was just a scorcher for them. Best costumes, best look, best photography, all the photos in this s series, the costumes, everything was just awesome. And so, and musically, it was just a great album. I still love Too Fast for Love. This was like the first majorly polished update to that. So, love, love, love that. Then you move into the little bit later into the 80s, and I would say, so that set me on a course for anything with hair and spandex. Van Halen set me on the course for anything that was, you know, even though they probably would be considered more of a hair band, and, uh, you know, not really... But they would have been the band that turned me on to the 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 what I would call just the traditional metal type style, the Judas Priests, the Iron Maiden, all the UK bands, Def Leppard, all of that stuff would have branched out under like the Van Halen line, and then Motley Crue would branch off into the Rats and all of the things with hair that came out back at that point. Whereas Metallica, Kill 'Em All, 1983 would have been the band that started putting me into the realm of the Exciters and the Ravens and the other, uh, you know, the, the grittier metal bands of that day. Um, and so this album, I would say, is still nostalgically one of my favorites. Every album, to me, you know, has something to it that I like about it. I think the Black Album is phenomenal. You know, they change. And so, I again, I'm not, I, I, I don't criticize them too much. There are some stuff that I'm not as favorable to. But I, you know, I take all the albums for what they are. This album, to me, from start to finish, it's raw. I grew up cutting my teeth on this. I know I just everything about these songs is ingrained in me. So it's still one of my go-to albums. This and Ride the Lightning are probably two of my most played albums. So yeah, great stuff. This is what cut me into the Solid Hammer. Even my friend at the time, the one who turned me on to this other stuff, he didn't know what to make of that. One of the things that he and I used to do all the time as teens is we'd go out in the road in front between our houses. You know, we'd go out in the road and we'd take a big box radio out there, put a cassette out there. We'd flip different choices of what we play and we would throw Frisbee. We would do this for hours. We'd be in the road playing Frisbee, listen to our music. I remember bringing a Metallica tape out there and he, he wasn't getting it. Years later, he got it, but... It was so different and so new at the time. It, it was like he wasn't sure what to make of it. So I fell in love with it really early on. Um, and then we move a little further. So all of that branched me into so many different realms of hard rock and metal. So many that I'm, I'm in love with today. Um, and then later went in the military in 84, 85. I met some guys that I played with. I played drums. They played guitar. And they said, hey, have you ever, one of the guys is like, you know, as a drummer, he's like, 
have you ever listened to like any jazz stuff? And I'm like, well, no, not really. I mean, these guys listen to hard rock and stuff too. So we had a lot in common when it came to that kind of music. And actually the guitar player from this band was from Florida and knew uh, Chris um, and John Oliver from Sabotage. They were a local band in his area and he grew up kind of knowing them. So it was interesting there. But anyway, they were Sabotage was making it, starting to make it big in, the, in those days. He turned me on to contemporary jazz, one of which was Billy Cobham. I've mentioned Spyro Gyro before. He turned me on to both those bands. But this is one of the bands, because drum, they're drummer-oriented, but Billy Cobham being a drummer, he's like, you should really, you'll like this, you really should listen to this. Fell in love with this album and the one that followed. Uh, and so uh, the power play and used to just play these to death and have fallen in love with a lot of the stuff that Billy Cobham has done. Now, early, early Billy Cobham stuff is more fusion-y. This is around the era, it seemed like when you started going a little more kind of, it, was, it, it wasn't it was as fusion as it was contemporary pop type jazz. So just, I love it all, but these years were where I cut my teeth and just love this stuff. And this album still, I just put this on and just zone out and just relax. This era of his music is just simply amazing to me. So those are the formative years of my musical journey of how I got into rock, hard rock, thrash, and then later into jazz. And I've gotten into classical and, you know, put my feet in a lot of different places and even got a whole pop side of me that uh, is not something I covered, actually. So anyway, great stuff. Craig, thanks for the idea with the thread. Everybody jump on the thread. Let's see what you got to say, and I'll see you later. Rock on and rock hard.